Hi, in this video I'll show you how to perform impedance measurement in MATLAB Simulink. So let's say you have a model or a network and you want to measure impedance from two ports. Uh, you want to get the magnitude and also the phase of the impedance. So first let us review some very basic stuff. So if you have a RLC circuit in series or in parallel, the resonance frequency is 1 over 2 pi square root of LC. And at the resonance frequency, the impedance is equal to R with a phase of 0. A little bit more complicated circuit, so a capacitor in parallel with the inductor in series with the resistor. This is typically an equivalent circuit that we use to model a coil or a turn um, of a winding. So in that case, the resonance frequency can be obtained by this formula. And at the resonance frequency, the magnitude of uh, the impedance is basically L divided by RC, and the phase is obviously 0. And these are the basics to drive these equations. Okay, so we start with number of circuits. It's a kind of exercise. So first we have an RLC circuit. These are the values. Let's say 10 power minus 3, uh, Henry, and 10 power minus 9 farad. And this is 10,000 ohm. So what you do, you have to put power GUI here. Uh, in your case, you will have only these two, for example. But I want to show you multiple circuits, so I have them here commented. So you place power GUI inside your model, and then you search for impedance measurement. OK, so you have this block. I rotate it now. Once more. OK. We connect the impedance measurement to here. And what we have to do is double click on this power GUI, select tools, impedance measurement, and basically, in a while, you will have the impedance of that network. We click update. And basically, we have the magnitude and also the phase plot of this impedance. We can do some verification because this is 10 power minus 3 and this one is 10 power minus 9. So the omega will be 10 power 6, 1 mega radian per second, and frequency will be 1 mega divided by 2 pi, which basically gives us 159 kilohertz. So if you click on Tools, Data Cursor, then if I place it here, very close here, so you can see that if I move this, the peak, the resonance happens at uh, 159. Maybe if I place it here, it's more reasonable. Yes. And the magnitude of the impedance at that resonance frequency is approximately 10 power 4, uh, which is okay because these two cancel each other and the resistance that I put is 10,000 ohms, so that is also correct. What else we can observe is that at low frequency, this inductor has very low impedance, so that's why it decays. And at high frequency, also capacitance impedance decays, so that's why the magnitude of impedance decays for both, uh, both sides. Okay, so now I comment this, and we analyze the series circuit. Now, when you want to analyze a series circuit, if I directly connect this impedance measurement to a series uh, circuit, it will not be able to perform the measurement because this one has a current source and you cannot connect the current source directly in series with an inductor. So therefore we have to put in a snubber circuit. So I put a snubber of 10 power 6 here. The parameters that we have is the same as before. So this one is 100 ohm, not the same. This one is 10 power minus 3. This one is 10 power minus 9. So the resonance frequency will happen at the same. So now if I update this, Okay, so this is basically the plot. We can notice that at very low frequency, what happens is that this capacitor will have a very large impedance. So this branch will get a very large impedance. So the total impedance of this network will be only this resistor, which is 10 power 6. And that is what we see here. The phase is also going approach to 0. And the resonance frequency happens at, again, same frequency as before. So 1 mega radian per second divided by 2 pi gives us uh, 159 kilohertz, which is, which is that one. And at the resonance frequency, the magnitude of the impedance is basically this inductor and capacitor, they disappear, only the resistor remain, and the resistor here, I put it 100 ohm. So 100 ohm in parallel with 10 power 6 gives us approximately 100 ohm. That's why we see here 
the magnitude of impedance is 10 power 2. And we see that the phase also changes from uh, minus 90 degree to plus 90 degree. Um, so at high frequency, basically, this, this one becomes uh, inductive. At low frequency, this one is more capacitive. So that's why it's minus 90. And then it moves to plus 90. OK, so this is very reasonable. Everything is good. Now I comment this. Another circuitry that I have here, as I said, a capacitor in parallel with a inductor and resistor sometimes is used as a model for a coil or a turn of a coil. So if you want to model a full winding, maybe we have to put multiple of these blocks next to each other and also consider the mutual coupling between them and also some extra capacitors that are there toward the grounds and other things to be able to model a winding. But let us do this analysis also. So this one is a 10 power minus 9 again. Here we have 10 power minus 3. The, the resistor is 100 ohm. So if I do this uh, analysis, OK, so at low frequency, basically, this capacitor is open. Uh, and the inductor has a very small impedance. So the only the resistance that is here will be dominant. So we have 100 ohm that is there. The phase is also 0. As the frequency increases, eventually we reach to the resonance. At the resonance, uh, the value, as I showed here, where is it? It's L divided by RC. So L for us is 10 power minus 3. And C is 10 power minus 9. So L, 10 power minus 3 divided by 10 power minus 9. So it goes up. It's 10 power 6 divided by R, which is 10 power 4. And that is what we see here. So at the resonance, we have 10 power 4. And of course, at higher frequency, then this capacitor, impedance of the capacitor decreases. So this branch takes over, and basically the value decreases. And also the phase goes to minus 90, because the circuit becomes capacitive. OK, so this is also very reasonable and understandable. It's good. Now, this is one way of performing the impedance measurement using this impedance measurement block. We can do the same thing using uh, another method, the state space method. That is what I'm going to show you here. So in this case, you have your network. I built the same network here, 10 power minus 9. And here we have 100 and 10 power minus 3, same thing. But in this case, you should put a power GUI. And also, you have some input. So for example, here is a current source. And uh, I measure the current here. And also, I measure the output. So what we want to obtain is the ratio of the output to input and plot it over a range of frequency. So you save this model in a folder. So in this case, I name it state underline s, state space. So here is the command that you have to use. Uh, power analysis, the name of your model, and ss. And if, I, if you run this, basically, where is MATLAB? Here. So you run the first one. It uh, figures out the state space equations. And now if you run this part, you see what are the inputs and what are the outputs. So inputs that we have is the current source. And we have two outputs. One is the measurement, uh, voltage measurement, and one is the current measurement. This current measurement is not needed, but I just put it here so that you can see that in some cases, you have multiple inputs, multiple outputs to be able to deal with them. So in this case, we have one input, the current source. And we have two outputs, one voltage measurement and one current measurement. So what we want to do is that we want to plot the output versus the input, like output to input. So we define the frequency range. Here I define it from 0 0.01 hertz till this value. And then omega is 2 pi f. And we plot both the diagram of uh, this system. Um, so I want to plot the first output, this one, versus the first input. In this case, you have only one input, but in many cases, you can have a network with many inputs. So you can have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. So if I plot this, basically, this is the magnitude, and this is the phase. And this is the same as what we got before, only the frequency range is different. OK, so if you double click on the axis, you can actually change these things. So click on units. For example, instead of dB, I put absolute. And here I select log scale. That gives me that. And here, if you want to change the frequency range from radian per second to hertz, then you can do that also. 
So this is um, this is similar plot. So now if I plot, let's say output uh, number two versus the input number one. So if I do that, what will happen? Let us look at the model. So this is output number two, and this is the input. So obviously these two are equal because this current is passing through here. So what we expect is that we get a straight line at one, magnitude one, and phase should be zero. Let us try it. And that is correct. So th this is dB. So I change it to absolute value in linear scale. Um, and this one to hertz. So you see that magnitude is one, phase is zero. So that is correct because we are plotting this output versus this input. They are already equal. This is another way to perform impedance measurement in MATLAB Simonic. OK, so now I'm going back to my first method. Where is it? So sometimes you can have, for example, multiple windings. So I disable this. Let's say you have two, of course, two circuits, let's say with different resonances. This is 10 power minus 4. In this case, it's 10 power minus 10. And these are the previous numbers. And if I run this one, you double click on it and you select tools impedance measurement. And if you update this one, then basically we will get multiple resonances and so on. So you can actually model a winding and put different section of winding. Um, yeah, maybe use mutual inductances that are coupled together and also some capacitances. So this one, you can see that we have two resonances because these two branches, they have different resonances. And the last part, which I'm going to cover, Okay, so in this case, let's say I have one winding. This winding, uh, there is this capacitor, and this first winding, it has a, uh, let's say, the impedance, the resistance, and also the inductance. And the second winding also has a resistance and inductance, and these are the mutual resistances and inductances. And these two coils are coupled also capacitively. So this is one coil, this is another coil. So basically, if I perform this measurement, we can see that uh, what happens to the input impedance seen from this coil. So this is the magnitude of impedance, this is the phase of impedance. This main one is for the first coil, and the second coil will also impact the impedance measurement on the first coil and creates this uh, resonance on that uh, impedance. OK, so this is all for um, impedance measurement in MATLAB Simulink. Whatever I said in this video is only true when you use uh, blocks that are from the Simulink library. So in case in your model you have some physical components, for example, uh, blocks from Simscape library, then these methods will not work. Uh, in that case, we have to use the linearization and also perform uh, frequency response analysis, which I'm going to cover it in a separate video. Basically, frequency response analysis and also frequency response estimation to verify the linearization accuracy uh, of your model. And so we will see that in the next video. All right. Bye.